If this model of providing real world utility subsidized by a crypto admission comes off, it is an absolute game changer. Like I cannot tell you the difference that will make, not just for BitTenza, but for capitalism in general. How's it going everyone? Cameron here with another The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. This time we're looking at BitTenza. Small disclaimer, I do own a position in BitTenza by holding some of the Tau tokens and I also hold some of the tokens of the subnets within BitTenza. None of this is financial advice and I am not a financial advisor. And just to add that I'm not going to go into how BitTenza works in this video, I'll do that in a separate video so stay tuned for that. But I am going to go into the good bits of BitTenza, the bad bits and the downright ugly bits. Okay, starting off with the good. The first good thing about BitTenza is that it has a really strong why. It has a strong reason to exist beyond simply number go up. And that why is that BitTenza is a decentralized, democratized network of intelligence. And that intelligence includes AI. We can all see that AI is eating the world. Do we want that to be centralized, controlled by only a handful of people containing their biases, hidden behind paywalls, where uh, ultimately the shareholders and profits are the total and ultimate goal or do we want that to be something where anyone can contribute where anyone can get involved large networks of people working together towards a better ai i think you'll all agree that the later is the more desirable and that's what bittenza is trying to do and to be clear bittenza still has some challenges in this area and i'll touch on those later on in the video but it's off to a really good start and the next good thing about bittenza is that you are still early. Have you ever had that horrible feeling of chasing the trend? Like Bitcoin blows up and you're like, ah, why didn't I get some Bitcoin when it was really cheap? Why didn't I see that coming? And then while you're looking over there, Nvidia blows up and you're like, ah, why didn't I get some Nvidia stock when it was really cheap? Now it's blowing up and I missed it. Well, now is your opportunity to front run the trend because this has not blown up yet, not by any stretch of the imagination. The whole ecosystem is really undervalued right now. So this is a great entry point. Why is it still early days? Well, because a lot of stuff's just been released, but also because it's quite difficult to invest into the BitTenza ecosystem. Like you gotta download these apps and they're a little bit clunky and then you gotta connect up your app to this website and that's a bit clunky and it's got loads of information and there's all this stuff going on. It's not immediately obvious how you move your money around within the ecosystem and invest in the different subnets. Uh, improvements in that area are coming. They're being worked on as we speak and there's a lot of um, development going on in this area. So that will go away. But as that goes away, then you'll have more and more uh, investment coming in particularly from big money investing. It's not easy to, if you're a big whale, to invest your money into BitTenza at the moment, but that's all going to change. So you need to front run that, not financial advice, you need to front run that as much as you can. So this is a really golden opportunity to get into the ecosystem. The next good thing about BitTenza is that this could be crypto's killer app. And to understand why, we need to understand a little bit about how BitTenza subnets compete against their centralized counterparts. You can think of BitTenza subnets as being a bit like Bitcoin mining companies. But instead of miners being computers, miners are people, gig workers all over the world. And instead of some random math problem that has no value outside of securing the network, people compete to build products with real world value, like AI software agents, AI content detection apps, or even just making really awesome YouTube videos. These are all examples of actual subnets, by the way. And whoever wins the competition is rewarded with BitTenser tokens called Tau. And it's this competition that secures the BitTenser network. But here's the kicker. Because the miners have already been well rewarded with Tau tokens, it means that the subnets acquire the winning products at a near zero cost base. And they can then sell them on to real world customers at a fraction of the price of their centralized counterparts. For example, Shoot Subnet64 is reportedly selling its inference work at one-sixth of the cost of Google. But here's the even bigger kicker. Because decentralized miners are always competing against each other to make the best quality products, and that quality is checked by a third set of people called validators, over time it drives relentless innovation and value to the customer on a logarithmic scale. And we're already beginning to see that take effect on some subnets. 
The centralized guides will not only be beaten on price, but on quality too. And this is the one-two punch of decentralized, incentivized competition on Bitenza. No wonder this guy looks pissed off. If this model of providing real-world utility subsidized by a crypto admission comes off, it is an absolute game changer. Like, I cannot tell you the difference that will make, not just for Bitenza, but for capitalism in general. At one extreme end of the spectrum, centralized providers will be completely priced out of the market and it will only be decentralized providers that will win. And that is a complete rewiring of everything that we know at the moment. And that's why it's potentially crypto's killer app. The next good thing about BitTensor is that it's AI meets crypto. And what's not to like about that? Let's take two smoking hot narratives and combine them. Enough said. And that brings me to the next good thing about BitTensor is that it's more AI than it is crypto. The people that are building subnets uh, and building out on the network, they're there for the tech. They're not there because it's a cryptocurrency thing. They're not trying to shell out a meme coin and get you to ape into it. These are serious engineers and they're there to build out real world utility. The cryptocurrency aspect is just a means to the end of being able to build out what they want. And that's a good thing because it means that the BitTensor network is a bit less trashy. It's a little bit less pump.fun and a little bit more, oh shit, this is actually quite good. Not that there isn't a place for pump.fun, maybe there is, it's just not in driving the next wave of AI decentralized innovation. The next good thing about BitTensor is that the tokenomics are very easy to understand. And that's because they basically just ripped off the Bitcoin tokenomic playbook. In fact, you could answer any question you have on Tau tokenomics with the phrase, just like Bitcoin. Max supply, 21 million, just like Bitcoin. Halving cycle, roughly every four years, just like Bitcoin. Anything else you want to ask, just like Bitcoin. It's just like Bitcoin. Let's, I mean, that's it. The next good thing about BitTensa is that it has some very high profile evangelists and you need evangelists for the word to get out there. Batting in the BitTensa corner is this guy, Barry Silbert. Now he was very influential in the very early days of Bitcoin. He helped lay out some of the rails for investment to flow into Bitcoin. Uh, for example, he was very influential in the setting up of the great Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. He was an early investor into Coinbase uh, and he just helped put a lot of the infrastructure together to help Bitcoin get to where it is today. And he is doing exactly the same thing uh, for BitTensa right now. And he is all in on BitTensa. I heard him say in an interview with Raul Powell that his moonshot scenario for BitTensa is that it becomes an even better store of value than Bitcoin itself. So yeah, he's quite bullish. There's also a really strong influencer community as well, helping to get the message out there. Like for example, this guy, Mark Jeffries, uh, he runs a podcast called Hashrate and he has really well thought out and considered uh, points of view that, and really interesting to listen to. Uh, so that's one I could recommend and there are plenty of others as well. And now we come to the bad. Okay, the first bad thing about BitTensa is that it's just really complicated. I mean, it's a complex system. You've got all these subnets competing against each other and there's rules to dictate that. And then within each subnet, you've got different miners competing against each other and there's different rules for that. And there's all this math and the white paper and strange sig signals, uh, strange things in there. And you look at it and you're like, well, do I have a degree in mathematics? Can I even begin to work this out? Now, as it happens, I do actually have a degree in mathematics and I could sit down and work this all out. Am I going to do that? No. Why is that? Because I have a life. Well, at least I think I have a life. Anna, do I have a life? No, you sit in front of the computer all day. There you go. Now, whilst it is a bad thing that it's complex and difficult to understand, will this stop people getting invested in BitTensa? Will it stop people participating in the network? I'm not so sure. I feel like with a lot of stuff in life, like, for example, air travel, very few of us really understand how an airplane works, yet millions of us are happy to climb on board an airplane every day. And we do that because we trust this. We trust the system, basically. We, we trust the regulation. Uh, we trust the airline carrier. 
and provided that there is a level of trust in the in the BitTensor ecosystem, I feel like people will get involved even though it is complex. The next bad thing about BitTensor is that it might potentially have limited use cases. I say this because it's very easy to see how a competition can be run where the results are quite measurable. So for example, if you have a subnet that says, okay, take this file and condense it down to take as little disk space as possible. And there is a subnet that does this. And the miners go away and they all try and condense the file down to a smaller size as possible for storage. And it's very easy to tell who wins because it's, well, it's the smallest file. So it's a very easy outcome to measure. But what happens if the outcomes are quite difficult to measure and quite subjective in terms of what is good? Because we're trying to work out useful work. So if I'm trying to get an image for a documentary or a presentation, how are the validators going to know that I like this image over that one because there's a lot of subjective criteria in what is good. One person might think this image is good, another person might think this image is good, this, another person might go, well, this color scheme goes well with my existing presentation. At the heart of this problem are those deep philosophical questions like what is good, what is truth, uh, is beauty in the eye of the beholder, what is beauty, what is the definition for beauty, all of these things philosophers have debated for centuries and now subnets need to somehow apply them to these all these different use case scenarios. And maybe the way it works in my picture example is that the validators look at all the pictures and choose what they think are the best four and show those to me and I choose the final one. And I never get to see the other ones that didn't make the top four, even though there may have been a picture in there that I would have really liked. And that might just be something we have to live with and it still may be a better system than a centralized solution. I have heard the founders reference this problem of fuzzy logic in interviews, so it's good to know that there are members of the community wrestling with the nuances around how you define useful work. And that brings me to my next bad thing, and that not all subnets are good or great. There is some trash out there, and at the very extreme end, I have heard reports that there is some borderline scams. So just to flag it, uh, Mark Jeffries, who is a guy who I've referenced before, thinks that it's probably about 80% quality and 20% trash. And actually that's not a bad ratio when you think about it in a kind of startup environment. If you think about the dot-com boom, uh, you know, 80% of that was probably trash and 20% was quality. So it's a good ratio to have 80% quality if what Mark Jeffries says is correct. I don't think we can begrudge Bitenza uh, for having some bad actors potentially on the network because you can't have sort of an openless, permissionless network which is open to everyone on one hand and then be vetting out bad actors and trash on the other hand. I think the two come together. Uh, you either have a very controlled or narrow system or you have a very open system which is potentially open to some abuse. And now we come to the ugly. Okay, for the ugly, I want to talk about diversity. And by diversity, I don't mean the dance group that won Britain's Got Talent. I'm talking about diversity within subnet ownership within BitTensor. Because subnet owners have the biggest influence on basically how the rules are run and what is defined as good work. And I've seen a lot of interviews with the subnet owners now, and I'm not seeing a great deal of diversity amongst the group of subnet owners. And by diversity, I'm primarily thinking race and gender. For example, I'm not aware of a single female subnet owner. There may be one, I'm just not aware of one. And I have tried to find if there was, there is any, uh, and I'm yet to find that there is. Uh, this is a problem that BitTensor has more inherited, perhaps, than created itself. Uh, because if you, you know, if you look at the demographics of people uh, interested in both AI and crypto, uh, is probably very reflective of that demographic. Nonetheless, we do need to think about how we change that as the status quo, because if BitTensor is to usher in a new era of decentralized AI that's permissionless, then we need that AI to be representative of the entire world. Now, it's not to say there aren't people already wrestling with this within the community. I'm quite new to the BitTensor community, so if you're watching this and you are aware of people that are tackling these issues, please do get in touch with me. I'd be quite interested uh, in linking up. You can just drop a 
a message in the in the chat. And that brings us to the end of the good, the bad, and the ugly bits of BitTenza. Just from a personal note, I am very bullish on the BitTenza ecosystem. I think it's the best opportunity I've seen since you know, Bitcoin, effectively, in the crypto side of things. Uh, and just in general, it's just one of the best opportunities I've seen uh, for a long, long time. So I am going to be doing more BitTenza content on this channel for sure. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. It just helps other people like yourself find my content. And as a small YouTube creator, it does really make a big difference to me as well. All right, that's it. I'll see you next time. Bye.